bloop, 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 bloop. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Diecast Resurrection. Today I'm doing a challenge with Keith over at Outlaw Speed Shop. I haven't done a challenge in a while. I backed off him a little bit just because uh, people were being too mean in the comments. These challenges are supposed to bring channels together. So I thought it'd be fun to make a red line today that we wish they made. And what I have chosen is a little 73 Trans Am. Right at the cutoff for red lines, I think the, the last red lines were made in 1977. There's years and years and years of cars and they, they got crazier and crazier as time went on. Bigger and more insane engines when they were starting to run out of ideas or whatever. But So today we're going to build a red line that we wish they made and I chose a 73 Trans Am. And that's what we're going to do. So let's get started on this bad boy. So my hope with this little unit is that this looks like a Redline Club car when we're done. Although I'm not going to be doing any fancy graphics or anything because we're going for, you know, a plain, simple Redline. But it's got to be really beautiful in the finish. So we're going to be swapping these out and I do plan on zinc plating this car. So as usual, first thing we're going to do is strip this paint. I don't know if I got enough aircraft paint remover to continue but we'll try it I almost decided to do this with that uh, green Mustang that we unboxed the other day with the metal base the one I was going to maybe make another Hoonigan car with but I decided against it and I decided and I thought, eh, ah, let's use one of these cheap plastic based cars because a red line paint job isn't a big, it's not a big deal. When trying to do a bunch of body mods, fender flares and stuff, any kind of ground effects, it's way better to do it on a metal based car. So I spared the Mustang for that and we're just going to use this little TA, no big deal. And that stuff's aggressive. That's in real time. It's bubbling up like that. That stuff will cause cancer though, so be advised. Bleep, beep, beep, beep. Really curious to see what this is going to look like with a Spectra Flame paint job. I think it's going to be excellent. Probably give this a few more minutes to just bubble away and then I'm going to take it over. I'm going to clean it up with a wire brush, hot soapy water, and we'll come right back with a nice shiny car. Going to get this in the zinc plater. We'll try to make this as much of a legitimate looking red line as we can. So we'll get a nice healthy coat of zinc on here. We can shine up later. I'm going to give that about 10-15 minutes and we'll come back and we'll check on it. Now for about 10 minutes, that's the finish we're left with. We've got a real light coating of zinc on here, and it should shine up quite nicely. And then we'll drop the car on the floor, as is tradition. And we can just hit this with a wire brush and expose all that beautiful zinc we just put on this car. This is what I would guess a factory finish would look like on a Redline car before it gets the color kind of has all the little granules in it and it'd be consistent with like a mass production style zinc plating so we're going to give this a polish and we'll see how nice we can get this looking everyone knows those red line club cars have a mere finish on it so we're going to do our best here i hit this with a little bit of metal glow Once you get to polishing, you can really start to see the flaws in the casting. So it looks not bad. It's a little bit grainy. It's got that original red line look. 
but I want to get mine a little bit smoother than that. So I think we're going to do some wet sanding here. Smooth out the zinc a little bit and then if I have to we'll do another coating process but I'd like to get it as shiny as possible. So I'm going to do a little bit of sanding just to even out the high spots. You can see this roof is already greatly improved. Try to hit all the major flat surfaces. It's going to look overall better in the long run. I love zinc plating stuff. It's so much fun. So it's looking pretty good. I'm going to put a nice soupy layer of this flitz on here. I'm going to do one more good polish, but this time I'm going to use wool. Instead of that cloth, it's not as abrasive and it should remove some of the finer scratches. I'm not sure what we're going to do for color. I'm going to think about it and uh, you know what? I think we're going to do a gold. How about that? Last time we used the gold, we did it on a T-Bird and I didn't mix it the way I mix it now and it came out kind of funky and we had to add a little bit of brown to it, etc, etc. Like it was a kind of a gong show. So I've never sprayed the gold with the new method of thinning it out as much as I do. So I think we'll do a nice gold on this Trans Am and it should suit it really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and degrease this completely and I'll come back and I'll meet you in the uh, spray booth and we'll just uh, go ahead and get this thing done. So as always I'm going to mix up a batch of regular automotive 2K urethane clear and then we're going to add our color to that. The last time I used this gold, I used it at full strength and the color came out kind of wonky. So we're going to see if, uh, if it's like the rest of the colors, when you dilute it, you get the proper look. Sir, you are very dehydrated. It's hard to believe that's going to look good, but over that shiny base, it should look amazing. So we'll see in a second here. So I've elected to use cap style axles. I salvaged these off of a, a smushed bug eye and I just straightened the axles out. While I was at it, I took some measurements and did up a drawing in Tinkercad so I'll be able to 3D print these in the future, which also opens up new doors for me making cap style rims. Hmm, interesting, right? So these bad boys just click on here, easy peasy. Big old meats in the back, Still a little bit crooky here. It's going to be funny, you know, if I die or something and my cars all get out there into the public, someone's going to come across this thing and be like, hey man, get I got a prototype. Pimp. Our body's done. It's looking pretty gorgeous. I'm very pleased with the way the gold came out. It's hot right now, I just took it off my rack, so I'm going to give it just a couple seconds to chill before I put it on. This should just fit on there, factory. This thing is sweet. Get a couple screws in there and we are done. Hell yeah, check that out. Pretty flash looking car, let's get it up on the rotisserie. So there's our little Trans Am. I think it looks pretty great as a red line. Not the typical video I would normally do, but I had a lot of fun with this. 
If you guys can think of any other castings that they should have made into Red Lines, I'd like to hear about it in the comments if you got a chance. Make sure you go check out Keith's video at Outlaw Speed Shop. I'm going to leave a link in the top comment of this video so you can easily go over there and check it out. He also turned a casting that shouldn't be a red line into a red line. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed this video. And I'm going to see you guys on the next one.